work? Was this a policy that was just implemented this year? It has been a policy of the hospital for the past two years. Mm -hmm. uh, the mandatory policy has been in effect. It was heavily encouraged before that. But I, I have never been in a department that it's been mandated for. So this is the first year it's been mandatory for me. So did you think that it was going to be this big of an issue when you refused to take the vaccine? Honestly, no. I had done my research on the flu vaccine. And while I agree that there's good purpose for the flu vaccine, the label itself says that it's not studied in pregnant women or in nursing mothers. Um, in my first year as a nurse, I took care of a patient who received, who obtained Guillain-Barre syndrome after getting the flu vaccine, which is a known side effect, um, albeit rare, it's, it's a known side effect of the flu vaccine. So in my, in my train of thought, if that can happen to a grown human being, what could it do to a growing fetus? And I am a healthy individual and take good care of myself and um, thought it was more important to me Sorry. It was more important for me to avoid the flu vaccine than to avoid the flu. And um, it's important to protect my patients as well. That's very important to me. And I offered to wear a, a mask during the whole flu season, um, which would protect my patients very adequately against the flu and not only the flu, but other viruses as well. And so how did you feel knowing that there was an exemption in place? There were other people at the hospital who were allowed to wear the masks if they were allergic to anything that was in the flu shot or if they had a religious reason for not wanting to take the shot. How did you feel when they said that your concerns over your unborn child weren't valid? That was very frustrating to me. And I had many people come to me and say, why don't you just say it's for religious reasons that you don't want the flu vaccine? And my response was because that's not true. It is not a part of my religious belief or a part of my denomination that we don't receive the flu vaccine. Um, I'm not against other people getting the flu vaccine, but this was important to me. This is what I felt was, was important to protect my baby, to protect myself. an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life vitamin B12 formulation. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. I'm running for president. Everyday Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. I'm hitting the road to earn your vote, and I hope you'll join me on this journey. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives 
gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. Feminists want the UN to censor the internet to prevent cyber violence. But what does Anita Sarkeesian define as harassment and cyber violence? Harassment is, as someone had mentioned, it's not just what is legal and illegal, right? Harassment is uh, threats of violence, but it's also the day-to-day -day grind of you're a liar, you suck, you, you know. That's right, criticizing feminists or calling them out on their bullshit by saying they suck or they're liars now constitutes cyber violence. And remember, this is the same woman who thinks everything is sexist, everything is racist, everything is homophobic, and you have to point it all out. And what does Zoe Quinn define as harassment and cyber violence? Trans women often face a very specific type of violence called dead naming, where people post pre-transition pre names. So under this definition, referring to Caitlyn Jenner as Bruce will be treated as hate speech. Because it's not Bruce Jenner, it's Caitlyn, and she's a stunning woman. They're actually calling for laws and Chinese style internet censorship to shut down anyone who hurts their feelings by disagreeing with them on the internet. They got me in tweets and it hurt their feelings, and so they had to go to the UN and they had to whine about it. I'm triggered. The UN wants governments to use their quote, licensing prerogative to ensure that telecoms and search engines are only, quote, allowed to connect with the public if they, quote, supervise content and its dissemination. So if an ISP or search engine doesn't comply with UN-mandated censorship of anti-feminist content, they'll be cut off from being accessible by the public altogether. The likes of Twitter and Facebook will be forced to, quote, proactively police every profile and post reports the Washington Post. And if you think that's unimaginable, then just look at Canada, where a man faces six months in prison for the crime of disagreeing with feminists on Twitter. 54-year-old Greg Elliott was also banned from using the internet for the duration of the trial. And all this will be overseen by an agency which just appointed Saudi Arabia to head a key UN human rights panel, the country that is about to crucify a 17-year-old for taking part in an anti-government protest. But of course, these new rules won't apply to feminists. They'll still be free to call for the genocide of men or putting us all in concentration camps while making bomb threats against weight loss companies and Gamergate meetups. So feminists will be free to continue to make death threats against anyone who doesn't embrace their radical ideology. But don't you dare tell Anita Sarkeesian that she sucks or the UN thought police will be knocking at your door. Everything is sexist, everything is racist, everything is homophobic. Everything is sexist. Everything's offensive to people like me. Let's go through the checklist. It's all misogyny. And that was Paul Joseph Watson with another great report. So Leanne, how does all this tie into the larger picture? 
Well, first of all, I'm going to apologize on air to Paul Joseph Watson. I was giving him a hard time initially because I'm like, why are you focusing on all of these reports? And he pointed out that it's not about attacking feminism or this or that. It's about attacking the authoritarianism that is now taking over the country. And here now with these ladies going to the U.N., we can see that this is going to be a larger global agenda. So kudos to you, Watson. You called it. And of course, you know, now they're taking this to the next level. I mean, they're saying everything's racist, everything's sexist, everything is homophobic. It is about uh, breaking down the individual and, and pulling it into this collective identity. Now you're not even allowed to uh, refer to yourself as a woman or talk about women's issues because that might be offensive you can't say mother or father. You, you can't, can't say mother eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because they're racist. Exactly. And so this is part of this whole a larger agenda to put us all into a collective. We're no longer individuals. And so one of the uh, articles up on InfoWars Today, Kit Daniels wrote it, uh, transsexuals want you to say birthing individuals instead of pregnant women. And so these are LGBT activists. They've already convinced the Midwives Alliance of North America to stop t referring to their clients as women and mothers and instead call them pregnant people and birthing individuals so that transsexuals will not get offended. They're actually putting this in some of their manuals and things. Um, and so obviously a lot of midwives are now protesting this, mm -hmm. calling it an attack on women, which it is. I'm, I'm, I've waited my whole life to become a mother and to be pregnant, you know, so now I have to call myself a, a birthing, birthing individual. individual. And so they're, they're talking about, now, uh, these midwives call out, say, by embracing the idea that any human other than those in a class called women carry offspring to term, give birth to them and nurse them. We are prioritizing gender identity over biological reality. And that's it. It's like they want they want to convince the world that this whole gender identity, this whole big movement that's coming out right now, when they're you know, 0.05% of the population of the world, now the entire world has to restructure our entire vocabulary, how we identify with each other. And it's it's pretty crazy that they're now actually affecting it so much that they're changing manuals and not even referring to women that give birth. And it's always it's, these groups, like they'll take a word that's not offensive or you know something that's not offensive, and they'll change like, well, you can't say that, but you can say our word that we came up with or our phrase that we came up exactly. with. Exactly. So it's like, you, don't say what you say, but say what we say. Right. Yeah. And that's, it's like you're replacing one form of authoritarianism or your perceived patriarchy and you're now transforming it with this other form of authoritarianism. It's, I mean, it's like, really, it doesn't make sense. And so something else as an attack on women, hey, feminists out there, there's all these social justice warriors who are now calling for women to say uh, they can't refer to their periods as women's issues because it's transphobic. Now, there's this hashtag on Twitter, live tweet your period. I don't know why people, you know, do crazy like the, things on Twitter, but. Is that like the free bleeding? I've seen those th images. I think that kind of ties in something different. I don't know. It's really bizarre. But this is where I think people hashtag live tweet your period and they complain about how perilous it is. Right. Well, especially when Donald Trump came out, however many months ago and made fun of Megyn Kelly and said that she was like bleeding from her eyes and her wherever. A lot of people then started getting on this hashtag live tweet your period. And then all of a sudden women were not allowed to do that in speaking out against, you know, this affront to women because it's transphobic. They wanted they wanted people to know that not all women have vaginas. So, uh, well, what what is the definition of a woman? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, it's it's the biological reality, but that reality, this is this doesn't. So this Not is a, all women <laughs> have vaginas. Yeah, please, please don't be offensive. So this sort of global agenda, something that we're seeing, has happened before. And there's another article up on Infowars.com. Did you know America now is similar to 1930s Germany? And it goes on to talk about. Uh, prior to the adoption of National Socialism, Germany was a, a, essentially a Christian nation. Um, they were considered the most, Germany was considered the most socially progressive country in Europe. There was open homosexuality, transgendered people, and the whole cabaret culture uh, was adopted there in Europe. They were fine with it because they're Christian, kind of live and let live. Uh, but then they, they were tolerant from what we would be called liberals were sort of pushing this out there. But then they started a lot of people 
started feeling that it was destroying their Christian values, especially when it was being thrust upon their children. So then all of a sudden, 